Richard. Uh, Thank you. Enjoy. Oh, I have this on, so I'm thinking, wow, I got loud all of a sudden. Amen. Good to see everybody here today. That's loud, isn't it? Woo. Y'all right on my vocal cords. Amen. So I got to watch my, my voice there. I get kind of crazy. Uh, my sermon today is going to be, do you have the keys? Amen. Do you have the keys? Wow. We need to talk about keys. But before we do that, let me open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as I bring this message to these people here today, let it let your will be done in my life. Father, let myself decrease so that you may increase through the use of the Holy Ghost to bring forth this message so that those here will receive and understand that we are not following a fictional tale. We are following true life and history through the Word of God, through the Bible that has been deemed true throughout the ages. Father, we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, I was, I, I, God asked me before I did this sermon, he said, do you have the keys? I said, keys? Yeah, I've got some keys, God. You know, a key is for what? Opening. A key is to unlock things that are hidden from you. A key is, I got one here, but I'll take another one because they're small. I'll drink them. And a key is, is made so that we can keep people from robbing us, right? We have a lock on our house. Anybody locked their house this morning when they left? Anybody locked their cars out here? Why do we lock it? Because we don't want to let evil in. So if we want keys to get to heaven, then we need to know how to lock the evil out of our lives and use the key to open up God's goodness unto us. Amen? You got keys? Sometimes we don't think about those keys. You know, the first person that's ever mentioned in the Bible that has the key is, is King David. Say amen? King David. King David had the key of being after God's only true spirit and love. A, God after, a man after God's own heart. Amen? So he gave him a key. Let's use another key. That's David's key, right? David had a key. He had a key that he could unlock heaven and call upon God so he could bless him. Through his whole life, he was blessed. He was still blessed even when he messed up. He wrote a lot of the Psalms. He wrote a lot of things in the, in the Old Testament. But he messed up. He wasn't a great guy sometimes. But he always knew how to reach God because God had chose him and gave him a key to unlock God's heart so he could pray for forgiveness. Amen. That's the first key you're going to read about in the Bible is David. David had that key. And out of the line of David, there's another key that comes along later. Say amen. We can trace genealogy down all the way to Jesus. And Jesus comes from the line, the tribe of Judah, which David was in, so that he was that key. Amen. It's simple. The Bible gives us who, who beget who. And if you go to join our Bible study, I go through all who beget, who beget, who beget. Amen? And it's, it's really neat, but you have to read it. So you have to read it. You have to study to show yourself to prove so that you can get a key. Say amen? I like my David key. David key helps me fight a lot of battles. Does that make sense? That helps me fight a lot of battles. Now, we're going to go quick into about three more keys. And if you would, go with me to Matthew. We're going to start in... Now I get to use my fire Bible. I'm happy. Uh, we get to start in, in chapter 27. <sighs> I think I'll be starting in... Verse 27 is what I'm going to read, but I'm going to give you a synopsis up to verse 27. Okay? God, Jesus, was betrayed by one of his own. One that he trusted, which was Judas. And Judas sat right beside Jesus at the Last Supper. One was on the right, one was on the left. Judas was on the right side. 
And he said, one of you here is going to betray me. And it was Judas who did it. Judas went and he knew what he had done was wrong. He went back to the Sadducees and wanted to give the money back and change his mind, but it was too late. Say amen. Too late. He lost his key. Say amen. He lost Jesus, who was a key. He lost it. But Jesus had to go ahead and pay a price. Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane before he was arrested. He said, God, there's anything you can do. Just take this cup from me. I don't want to do this. And he prayed and he sweated and he sweated and he prayed and he sweated and he knew what was coming. And he prayed so fervently that blood came from his pores and poured down his body. And he was sweating blood and out all over himself. And he kept going back to his disciples and saying, why are y'all sleeping? Come over and help me pray. Okay, Lord, we'll help you. Back to sleep they would go. Amen? I think sometimes we forget how precious Jesus is and we go back to sleep on him even though he's working on our behalf. Uh-oh. <coughs> Are you going to go to sleep on Jesus today? Are you sleeping on Jesus today? Have you taken that Jesus key and put it back in the pocket and said, I don't need that key. I can handle it myself. Abraham and Sarah tried that process to handle it themselves and with, the, with their uh, Hagar, who was the bond servant, and they gave Hagar to Abraham and so he had a child named Ishmael. Say amen. And that plan didn't work at all. Matter of fact, I told my wife today, I think Ishmael was a Palestinian because that's how he acts. Say amen. They won't take them people anywhere because they want a war against everybody that they live with. They got the land they're on through the peace accord that said they would never war against Israel if you just give us back our strip of land. They gave it back and what are they doing today? They're still warring against Israel. Just letting you know that's what happens when you try to do for God. It never works out. God wants you to put Him in charge so that you can pull your key out of your pocket. Say amen. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm going a little bit faster. Okay. Now, Jesus was beaten, bruised, and battered for our sins. Say amen. And by His blood, we were saved and, 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 and taken away from this world. Jesus had went through everything for us. And then when He was had a chance to be set free by his own people, they chose Barabbas instead. A murderer and a thief. Jesus had done nothing wrong, but spoke the word of God. So Jesus was sent to the cross. What did Pilate do? He washed his hands of it. He said, this is on you guys, you Sadducees. It's on you. You chose this death for him. Verse 27, it said, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. Now you got to think about this. Jesus already had been given 39 stripes. Anybody have a spanking when they was little? Anybody had to go cut their own switch? Oh, yeah, I had to go cut my own switch. And a couple of switches, that was enough for me, right? But imagine that amplified 39 times on your back and your sides and your front and your legs because they just beat him every place they could hit an open. Amen. He was beat like that, and he had no power. They say if they gave you 40, you died. So they had him right on the brink of death. Say amen. Right at brink of death. And now they're going to put a whole band of soldiers around him. Because what's he going to do? I mean, he's been beat like this. He's bloody. He's bruised. 
His eyes are probably all puffed up because the people hit him when he was arrested and went through town. The people were jumping just a few days before. They were praising him and he was coming in on a on on nice palm fronds. And now when they've arrested him, he's going to jail. They're jumping over each other to hit him in the head. For a man who did nothing wrong. Twenty-eight, and they stripped him and put him, put on him a scarlet robe, gave him a red robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, "Hail, King of the Jews!" They gave him a staff made out of a reed. They bowed before him and they prayed, Ah, look at the king of the Jews. Little do they know in the book of Revelation, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is who he says he is. You will have no choice to do that. The devil thought he was making a mockery of Jesus, but he's only setting his own end. Say amen. He was setting his own end. They didn't have the book of Revelation yet right now. See, they they were just doing this. Say amen. Hadn't been written yet. Hadn't went to the poor old John. Didn't go to the Isle of Patmos yet. He didn't write this. So he's, he's here in Matthew, okay? Or give me a Matthew's version. I like it. Now get this. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. Hit him some more with a stick. Amen. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off him and put his own garment on him, and they led him away to be crucified. And as they came out, they found a man, Sinri, Simon, by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. That poor guy was just standing there, and he got stuck in there to carry the cross with Jesus. Would you have carried the cross for him? Cyrene had no idea who this man was. Had never heard of Jesus. And he got stuck carrying the cross. Do you think he found a relationship with Jesus along that way? I imagine he did. A man who had done no wrong, beaten so severely with a crown of thorns upon his head, bleeding, beaten, and battered, and not able to even hardly walk. This man carried his cross up up to Golgotha. We know we don't think about that poor guy very much. We don't think about Cyrene performing a great task, but if Jesus were alive today, would you serve him? I got some news for you. He is alive today. He has the big key. You need to serve him. Revelations chapter 2, and there about verse 18 or 19, on the Isle of Patmos, Jesus said to Paul, I am the man who has the keys of death and hell. Where's your big key? Amen. Let's get a little further in here so I can shake my keys. I can't shake them yet. Say amen. I don't get so crucified up on me. We're just still going over this a little bit. And they were come unto a place called Galgatha. That was the same place uh, to say a place of a skull. That was a place where all people who were crucified were put upon was Galgatha. So the whole town could see it. You know, People talk about, oh, I, I don't understand that. Well, they took him to the highest point for the temple to be seen, and that's where it was seen. Jesus could look down upon the temple that he told that he was going to tear down and raise back up in three days. Jesus could see it. They're like, well, I never thought about it. He could see the temple. Where they had passed judgment that he wasn't worthy to be the son of God. 
and that he needed to be crucified and taken away. You know, just because you might be a little different doesn't mean that you should be crucified and carried away. Say amen. Can you say amen to that? I mean, I'm a little odd. I, if you squirrel, I got ADHD. Sometimes it's hard for me to focus. Say amen. amen. So I, a lot of people don't know that, but it's true. They used to call, I just was unruly when I was going to school. Say amen. But I've had a lot of squirrel t- treatment. Amen. Uh, let's go a little further. It says, uh, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. Ugh, that sounds bad enough. I don't know what gall is, but that sounds terrible. Amen. Gall was a was a, 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 a like a beer beverage. It was like a beer and wine put together, and they put vinegar in it, and it was like a spoiled drink, and they gave it to them to drink. Amen. It was enough to keep you hydrated, but it sure didn't taste good. Whew, they must have been living in West Texas. That water tastes terrible out there. I don't know if it's true or not, but I would say that. Amen. Now, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink it. As soon as he got one in his mouth, what did Jesus do? He spit it out. I'm not drinking that. You people are tougher than me. I'm not drinking that stuff. Say amen. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them. Upon my vesture did they cast lots, and sitting down, they watched him there. And it was set up over his head, accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. You know, Jesus was the King of the Jews, and he came for the Jewish redemption. But they rejected him. So they had a chance for the big key, but they threw it away. I'm sure glad they did. Not that Jesus had to die, but so that I could be grafted in, being a Gentile and not of Jewish birth, that would give me the right to go unto God and into Jesus and go unto heaven. Say amen. This is the only reason that you get to go to heaven is because the Jews cast out Jesus And Jesus said, go into all parts of the world, preach my name, and give those people the key to me. You have your big key? He's my big key. I always have my big key with me. Say amen? You know, know, Jesus says what in his word? He says, even no matter where you're at, I'll never leave you nor forsake you even to the end of the age. He is with you all the time. Why? Because we have a different relationship than they had in the Old Testament. We have the New Testament, which is in the age of grace. Jesus can now come on the inside of us and live through the fruits of the Holy Ghost that God said, spread this out among the people. It's a gift I give unto them. It's a new life. That's my Jesus key. My new life. You got your new life? Amen. That's my new life. Hang on, I know it's a little slow. I'm sorry. Then there were two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and one on the left. And they and they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads. <laughs> wagging their heads. And saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now. If he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. Can you imagine that? Your worst day. Your worst day. We all had one. Can you imagine that there's a death in the family and you're so upset and you're you're so crying because something has been ripped out of your heart and taken away from you. 
And people come by and say, oh, I bet they went to hell because they didn't really act like they knew Jesus. Such a ripping. A ripping. That rips your heart. And you say, oh, oh my God. I'm never going to get to see them again. The word promises if they were saved, I get to see them in heaven. And I'm going to heaven. I want them to be there with me and to live in the land of milk and honey. But these people are walking by and mocking me and saying they're, they can't be saved. They're going to hell. You can't have that glory. That's what they did to Jesus. You have sin is what they were saying to him. You say you trust in God, but come on down from there. Oh, you liar. You can't do anything. You, you said you tear the temple down right down there and raise it back up in three days, but you can't do it. You already got you on the cross and you're dying. Let's, you know, sometimes we forget this book is real. This is people really taunting our Jesus in front of him. His disciples and those that believed in him were standing far back. And these people were in front right up by where the soldiers are taunting Jesus. Probably spitting at him and throwing stuff and laughing at him, gasping for air. Did you know what kills you on a cross? You drowned because water builds in your lungs and you drown. You can't breathe. Someone's on your chest. You can't get air. And they're mocking him. He's up there dying right next to these thieves that need to be crucified also. Someone asked me, they said, do you think they would crucify Jesus today? I said, you bet they would. Unless they saw him come from the sky, they would say he was a devil and crucify him right away. I would never do that to Jesus. Oh, yes, you would. Even Peter said, I cut off a guy's ear and Jesus put it back on. said, I'll never deny you. And before Jesus even went to the cross, Peter denied him three times. going on with us we uh, we talk big now don't we can't we all talk big oh i would stand right next to jesus they wouldn't touch my jesus we talk big but when the rubber hits the road what's going to happen in your life oh let me go a little further i know my wife's snoring over here oh i'm sorry um now, in saying that, thou destroyest the temple, go on down 42, 43, we're in verse 44. It says, the thieves also which were crucified with thee cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour, there was a darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. From three o'clock to six o'clock. That's what time it was. Three o'clock to six o'clock. What's it look like at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Sun's out. Whew. And where they're at, it's hot. Let me tell you, Israel's hot. I've been in that part of the world. It's hot. Can anybody say 125 degrees? Ooh, it's hot. It takes your breath away. When you walk out the door, <gasps> imagine Jesus trying to breathe in that air. Human, right there on the ocean, too. Sea of Galilee's right there. They're just on the sea, and that all that humidity, it's, ooh, it's tough. Say amen. It's tough. Jesus is there, struggling for every last breath, his lungs filling with bodily fluid, and he can't even breathe. And he can't put his arm, you know, all it would took was him to be able to put his arms down and he could have started breathing and the water would have dissipated out of his lungs. Do you know that? That was it. 
Mm -hmm. Now, it says also here, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Now, it's dark outside. Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachini. Or, as I can say it in English, what it is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This is the only time Jesus has ever said, God, why have you left me? But could you imagine your child on that cross? Can you imagine your child being mocked and made fun of and saying they're never going to go to heaven because they were useless, a worthless piece of nothing? The man who spoke the world into existence, who created Adam out of dirt and breathed into his sinews and brought him to life. They're doing that to his son who helped him build this earth. God couldn't watch. I couldn't watch. I couldn't watch one of my children or dear friends be killed because it would tear my heart out. And my wrath may be not let me be a Christian. Say amen. God's wrath is coming. Say God's wrath is coming. And when he renovates this whole earth with fire, that's God's wrath. He gave us a promise with the rainbow saying, I won't destroy the earth again until we come to take it over. Say amen. Oh, is that in this book? Yeah, it's in there. Don't worry. He talks about it all. All right. And, and some stood there when they heard that and said, this man calleth for Elisha. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. The rest said, let me, let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. They thought Elijah was coming down in his chariot to save Jesus. Jesus, when he had cried out with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. You got a ghost in you. It was in Jesus. It's in you. I don't like to call it the Holy Spirit. Jesus had the ghost. I got the ghost. Say amen. He got the ghost. I got the ghost. You got the ghost. You can call it spirit. I call it ghost. Say amen. Because what did Jesus give up? He didn't give up the spirit. He gave up what? The ghost. That's what the Bible says. And I have a ghost. Not boo ghost. Okay. Now, it says right here, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent twain from the top to the bottom, and the earthquake and the rocks rent. Uh-oh, what happened to the temple? Earthquake started shaking, and the big veil that the Moses had the Hebrews make when they were in walking in the desert rent from top to bottom, breaking forth the most holy of holy places to be seen by the naked eye. Well, what does that mean? That means the most holy of holies is now upon the cross and in heaven. Did you know I thought it would have been a great thing if Jesus would have just walked in the temple and walked over to the holies of holies and touched the Ark of the Covenant? I thought that would have been so proving that who he was, but he didn't want to do that. Say amen. Because he could have. Okay, I'm sorry. We talk about that a lot during our Bible talk. It's a really good thing to watch. Okay, and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now I want to talk about a couple of keys we're going to get right now. Because they really don't talk about it. They just say, oh, these dead people popped up out of the ground and started walking around. The only people that were in the ground that could pop up and walk around 
were those in Abraham's bosom. Say amen. They were the Jews that couldn't fulfill every bit of the law, but they fulfilled enough of it that they shouldn't go to hell, but they could go to heaven, maybe on the day of judgment. Say amen. That's what that was. But what would make them pop out of the ground and walk around and go to the temple and worship God and they see them by many walking around? Oh, did you know that Jesus went unto where it said in the book of Revelations and went in there and took the keys of death? He took that key. And he preached unto Abraham's bosom. And all those that believed he was the son of God rose. And all those who didn't believe he was the son of God went unto hell. That's pretty simple, ain't it? That's where those folks came from. Did you know we're waiting for a rapture to happen? Is they waiting on a rapture? What's going to happen in that rapture? First, it says there's going to be the trump of God's going to sound. Whoop, and with a great shout, whoop, you think the earth's going to shake? Yeah, I guarantee you. Earth's going to shake. Graves are going to pop open because the saints are coming back for their bodies and they'll be seen by many walking around. It's going to be busy at the cemetery. There's going to be folks walking around heading to the church to praise God. I'm not lying. It's already happened once. And guess what happens? They ascend unto God and those that are left shall be caught up with them to meet them in the air. They don't call it the rapture in the Bible. I know I'm not speaking something that's true. I'm speaking something about the great catching away is how they put it in the Bible. In my King James Version it does anyways. I'm going to get caught up with Jesus. You know what it means to be caught up with? Get caught up on your life. So we got Jesus, got David, got death, got hell, and we got one key left. One key. Jesus in the book of Revelation said, go on to those people and give them the key. You have keys. You have keys to eternal life. You got them. There they are. I covered every one of the keys. You got the keys here. You say, well, he has keys to death. Jesus had whipped death when he was born. Amen. He whipped death then because everywhere there was someone dead that he wanted to live again. What did he do to them? He called to them and they come up and went back to life. Jesus already took that away from the devil. He has all the rest of them here. Unless you got this key, you don't have any power over death. Do you know that? Without this key, without Jesus, the devil can kill you. Did you hear what I said? Without Jesus, the devil can kill you. In the book of Job, he says, Oh, I... God was praising about Job. He said, you can do anything you want to Job, but you can't kill him and he still won't forsake me. And the devil got mad because he couldn't kill Job. So what did he do? He killed all of his family. He killed his wife. He killed all of his livestock. Took everything away from him. But he couldn't take his life. When you have Jesus... You have the key. You have the key to David, which is the lineage. We are grafted in through his blood to live forever with him. Say amen. I'm grafted in. I'm adopted son of Jesus Christ, the son of the true and only living God. Amen. Oh, I guess what other key I got? Oh. I got the key to death because Jesus already had it. I got the key to hell. And I got the key to the grave. 
Where's your keys? Do you have them in your pocket? Hit out? Or do you got them in your heart? And you shake them at the devil. You forget, devil, who I am. These make a lot of noise, devil, because I'm praising God and you can't stand His name. you got to run in shame because you know He took everything from you and gave it unto me. I'm His chosen child. I shall live forever and reign with Him in heaven because He got all the keys to this world and He gave them to me freely. I know that just sounds crazy, but I had to wait on these to come here before I could preach it. Amen. And you know, well, you ordered these keys. I didn't know how many was going to be on there. But God knew. God knew. He had me cover every one of those keys. I said, well, God, I thought it was just three. He said, no, there's five. I said, oh, okay. There's five. Read the book of Revelations. Do you want those keys that he told John about on the Isle of Patmos? Chapter 2, book of Revelations. He come down with fiery hair. Oh, and said unto him, I am the one that has the keys of death and hell. And don't be afraid. Write down everything I'm going to give you and share it with the people. Pastor, that's what I have. I'm sorry if it was too long. But there's one thing I want to ask. And with my pastor's help. If you don't have the key. To Jesus. And you need it. Today is your day. Say today is your day. It is your day to take the key because with this key, you get everything in this world and beyond for an eternity. Thank you, Pastor. I'll leave the keys for you.